Welcome to this week's Bite Size PD, where the topic is using the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 in Canvas. And if you weren't aware of this already, uh, the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 is the integration in Canvas that will be replacing our current version of, or what we've currently been using for the Google LTI in Canvas. We will have both options up until June, but as, you, as I go through this training today, you'll learn more about when the current version is going to be going away and this one will officially take over. Uh, the learning intentions and success criteria for this session is you're going to learn about the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 so that you can begin using this LTI in your Canvas course and or courses and also begin that transition from the current Google LTI to the new integration. Uh, you'll know you're successful when you can use this new LTI to embed Google files like docs, slides, et cetera, using the Bridge Content Editor. And if you're not sure what that is, I'm going to show you what it is, um, where you can add Google files to a Canvas module. And the last one, which I think is the reason most of you are probably going to be watching this right now, is how to create a Canvas assignment that either distributes a Google Doc template that, or allows students to work directly in CSD Docs and submit their work in Canvas. So the agenda for this session, I'm going to start with what is the Google Assignments LTI 1.3 and why the change. And then I'll do a demo of those success criteria elements of how to embed a Google Drive file, how to add a Google Drive file to a module, and then how to create and submit an assignment. And then I will end with some considerations and recommendations moving forward with this new LTI. So what is Google Assignments LTI 1.3? And I know I keep saying LTI 1.3, and that's to really solidify what's different. And you're going to see where we see 1.3 over and over in Canvas as we're working with it. And then why the change? So this LTI is actually created and supported by Google, where the current Google LTI that we have been using was actually created by Canvas. And I want to say created and supported with some air quotes, because um, I know over the past year, maybe two years specifically, uh, many of us have experienced more issues with the Google LTI, where things won't load, um, just some random weird issues. And every time we'd reach out to Canvas, um, the support would be a little limited because it's Canvas trying to access something via Google. So knowing that this is now created and supported by Google, we're going to see a better workflow, better support when things maybe break or aren't working the way they should be. Uh, the Google Assignments LTI 1.3, just like the original, is a way to streamline assignment distribution. So you can ass assign Google Docs, Sheets, Slides through an assignment. I haven't tried this, but in all the documentation I've been reading, uh, we can also assign sites, Jamboards. I have done uh, Google Drawings before, if that's something that interests you. So if you haven't, if you do sites or Jamboard, you can definitely try those out. Um, it automatically creates a personalized copy of project documents for each student to edit, and it supports assigning multiple files in one assignment. Uh, the last three bullets are some additional features or new features that I think uh, you are really going to like and actually see a benefit to move to this new LTI. Um, after creating an assignment, you have the ability to see which students have started their assignments, meaning who has made their own copy and have started some progress. There's a way for you to click into the assignment and actually see what they're doing and even provide some feedback using the power of the Google Docs to give that reach feedback, using those like comments that are on the side, um, the strike throughs, edit suggestions. You can even type directly on the document that you are reviewing. And I'm going to demonstrate all of this for you so you can actually see what it looks like. One is the teacher and also as the student. So really why the change is Canvas is going to disable and turn off the current Google Apps LTI um, June 30th, 2024. So I will be honest, we've known about this change for a, we, we knew about this LTI for a while. Um, they've never given us a hard deadline. They now have. And another reason why we haven't forced this move or even mentioned the move yet was they didn't have um, the integration with SpeedGrader fixed or set up where it was working consistently. That now works. So because it now is very streamlined with SpeedGrader in Canvas, we feel comfortable with this move and wanting to give us all as much time as possible to get used to this transition. And then as I mentioned, the fact that Google Assignments LTI 1.3 is now supported by Google versus Canvas, this results in some improved functionality. 
So I'm going to go through these next two slides and then I'm going to demo both of them. But the first is when you're embedding a Google Drive file on a page, an assignment, anywhere where you have access to the rich content editor. And the rich content editor, when you're in an editing screen, it's when you see that box where you can actually add the text and you can bold, italicize, add links. That's the rich content editor. So to do this, step one, you get into the editing screen of wherever you want to embed that file. Uh, you click on the little plug, which accesses the external tools, and you want to select Google Drive LTI 1.3. When you click on that, it will ask you, a window will, sh will show up just to make sure you're going into the right Google Drive account. So you do want to make sure it's your csdocs.org and then select file. And if it's not, you just want to switch account and make sure it's CSD Docs. Then it'll pull up your CSD Docs. You can then click on the file you want to add and then you click on add. So that's embedding and then adding it to a, a, a module Similar, um, when you go to the module section of your Canvas course, in the module you want to add the document or file, you click the plus sign. Um, you change the add from, I think it defaults to assignments in most cases, just change it to external tool. You look for Google Drive LTI 1.3, not just Google Drive, Google Drive LTI 1.3. And like before, just make sure it's the right Google Drive account, so your csdocs.org account. Hit select file. You choose the file and you add it. So I'm going to get out of this presentation for a moment and just go to my Canvas course as a teacher and show you what this looks like. Um, I'm just going to, I'll go to my module section and we'll do this. So I'm gonna go into a page and it's thinking. Actually, you know what? I clicked on the wrong thing. I apologize. Let me just go to an assignment. Let's just start from scratch. I'm just going to add something new. So it can be an assignment. It can be a content page, anywhere you have this rich content editor. And so put your cursor where you want the embedded document or file to go. And as mentioned before, you want to click on that plug or the external tool or the apps icon. If you don't see the Google LTI 1.3 come up, just click on view all and you can scroll down and we will see Google Apps or you might see Google Drive. This will eventually be going away. Our only option will be Google Drive LTI 1.3. And as mentioned before, you're gonna get a window just to make sure it's the right CSD Docs account. And then I can find the file I want. So I'm gonna embed a presentation, click add, attach, and it's now on my page. And then I can hit save and make it available. Oops, I'm just gonna say no, submission. I, I did a Google slide as an example. You can do a document, you can do a spreadsheet, um, whatever you can embed, you can try. So that's adding it to the rich content editor of a, doc, of a page and assignment. If you wanna add and make a file available via the Canvas module, that's actually what I clicked on before. That's where you click on the plus sign. See where it says add assignment? I wanna add external tool. Scroll down to Google Drive LTI 1.3. The Google Drive will be the old. It'll eventually be going away. So LTI, that's why I keep saying one, LTI 1.3. So it's ingrained in our brains. It's 1.3. Select file. Once again, making sure that it was my right um, account. I find the document or slideshow, whatever it might be. Click add, attach and it will now be in my module section. So I see a URL, URL here, so I know it's gonna attach. It's linked, I wanna make it visible to students, I just click on publish. So those are the first two ways you can add files or make them available to your students in your Canvas course. Now, once again, the reason why I think a lot of you are gonna be watching this is I know a lot of us use the Google LTI as a submission type. Um, in our Canvas courses. So the process is very similar. There's just gonna be some new options that aren't major, but it's good for you to know what they mean. So when creating the assignment, I will demonstrate this, the teacher and student views as well. So it's coming. Um, step one, you cre create the assignment like you normally do. You add your directions, whatever information you want. And in the submission type, you still select external tool, but you wanna make sure you're choosing rather than Google Docs Cloud Assignment, you choose Google Assignments LTI 1.3. 
this Google Docs cloud assignment will eventually be going away. Um, so it won't be an option, but th up until June, it will be. So Google Assignments LTI 1.3. The next window, similar to what we saw before, we're now asked to link our, our Canvas course. I think you're asked to link the first time and every other time it still has that window coming up saying, is this the right account? This link will actually is what helps generate um, the connection to your CSD Docs account. So a folder will be created in your in your CSD Docs drive and um, for each course, and then um, the assignments can be shared saved there. So as a way, if you want to go directly to Google, you can do that. Um, then the step three, this window is going to appear. You have the option to choose a plagiarism checker, a word of caution about this. Um, based on the Google education workspace that we have as a district, we only get the ability to use this plagiarism checker five times, I've been told per course. So I don't know if that means per course per year, but you're, you're limited on how many times you can use the plagiarism checker, but you're definitely welcome to try it out and see what you think, but know you're limited five times. Then you have your option to either attach a file. This is where it you can grab something you've already created that becomes a template for students to use and work from or create, meaning you can create something that's fresh, brand new, it's blank, and make it available to the students. Oops, the next option is you select the option on how you wanna grade assignments. Um, there's the Google Assignments option or the Canvas Speed Grader option, and then you can click Create. I wanted to talk about those two options on the grading because realistically, I think all of us, and I don't wanna make the assumption because maybe there is someone who wants to try out the Google Assignment option grading, grading option, feel free to do so. But knowing how our district uses Canvas and we use SpeedGrader and our Passback in our secondary schools, I could see Canvas SpeedGrader being the one we're always going to select. And how these work is, so both options, the teacher creates the assignment, attaches or creates the files and publishes the assignment for the students. Copies of the attached files are made for and owned by each student. And then the students will add edit, edits, do whatever they need to submit their work. That process is the same. When it comes to grading, once the student submits, when it comes to the Google Assignments option, the file ownership transfers to the teacher, meaning the student cannot edit their files, they can view them, but they can't continue working. Um, the teacher will grade and return the student assignment. Once the teacher returns the assignment back to the student, then the student can get back in there, make whatever edits they need to, and they can resubmit. Um, the students will get their grades and feedback through Google, not in SpeedGrader. So like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna be too discouraging. I just know based on the history and what happens in our district, SpeedGrader is the way to go because it acts like what we're used to. The files are uploaded to SpeedGrader, meaning you get kind of a PDF version of what the students are working on. So the students can then still get into their, their file and make whatever edits they want to, but the teacher won't see those edits and updates until the student resubmits. And when the student resubmits, then the teacher has access to both versions. Um, the teacher will grade the student's assignment in SpeedGrader. They get their grade and feedback in Canvas. You can do the pass back. And then once again, students can edit their files and resubmit the assignment. So when it comes to um, the option, once again, I'm gonna be like a broken record. I would stick with Canvas SpeedGrader, but you're more than welcome to try out the Google assignment. Um, I just don't feel like it's gonna be where, what people are gonna wanna do. Um, and then before I go to the teacher view and student view, I wanted to show you two noteworthy features that this is the reason why I think, not the only reason, but a big reason why I think we're gonna like this update. Once a teacher creates the assignment, they get a preview into when students in their in their Canvas course have accessed their, um, that assignment via Google. So you can actually see this particular student, student, I can see it's assigned, meaning this student clicked on the link to create their copy. They haven't submitted it yet because this assigned will change to submitted once they've submitted their work. Um, but I can actually click into this um, student and click until I get to the document they're working on and I can actually see the progress as they're doing it. And I have the ability to use the Google tools like commenting, I can edit, um, I can highlight, I can strike through, I can actually start providing feedback to students in real time um, for them to see prior to submitting um, their assignment. So I'm gonna demonstrate this both, both of this for you. So I'm gonna go out of my presentation and go into my course. I'm just going to create a new assignment. I'll call this States of Matter 3. 
One second, I'll go into my editing. So it's just creating the assignment like normal. Um, I can add my directions. Um, give it a point value, my assignment group, my how I want it displayed. Um, the submission type, change it to external tool. And I would actually recommend you do not click the load this tool in a new tab, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Um, because it doesn't display like it used to. Um, okay, so rather than Google Docs Cloud Assignment, click on Google Assignments LTI 1.3. Like I said, the first time it'll ask you to link, I think because I've done this enough, I don't get the link, so it's just gonna ask me to continue. Once again, just confirming that I'm using the right account. First time you do it, it'll say link. I'm not going to do the plagiarism checker, but notice if I do that, it does tell me how many options, how many times I can do it. I'm going to attach, so I'm going to find the states of matter template. I'm going to add it. I'm going to keep Canvas Bead Grader selected. And, I'll, and you'll see where I could actually attach more than one file. I'll be honest, I haven't done that yet, so I'm not quite sure what that looks like or feels like for students, but we can definitely we have time to explore. I'm going to click on Create. It's going to take me back to this window. I'm going to hit select. I see that URL, so I know it's all linked. And once again, I'm going to keep this unchecked. I'm going to give it a due date, save and publish. And I'm publishing it because I want to go to the student view. And I want to show you what the student experience is like. So if I now go to modules, the States of Matter 3 is the new one I'm using. So I have my directions. It's going to ask me, and it's I'm in an incognito window, so this is why I'm being asked to log in. Um, the first time students do this, I think they do have to log in with their CSD Docs account. Um, but after that, it should automatically take them there. So I'm in an incognito window, which is another reason why I'm being asked to log in. So it's going to log me in. Okay, so here's what it looks like. So I can click open to attach and submit, or as a student, I can just click right on the file. And I could actually see most kids just clicking right on the file. And here's the document I can work on. So I'm going to say, I know this is wrong. Let's spell it right first. Let's do water, a chair. Let's say gas, I'm way off on this one. But you can see I've started it. But what I want to show you, I'm going to go back to my teacher view because right now I just created the assignment. I'm not seeing anything that's helpful. But if I, not that it's not helpful, but if I refresh my screen, you'll see I have my point value. I have my due date. I now see, prior, prior to this, I didn't see anyone had accessed the assignment. I now see the student has accessed the assignment. It's assigned, meaning he's opened it. If I click on it, I now can go into this actual assignment as my student is working and I can say, I can leave a comment. Like rethink this one. Like why would water not be a solid? Or if I wanted to be as bold, I could actually um, strike through that as well. So I can leave these this feedback for the students. And if I go back to the student view, I'm now in that student real time. There was no delay. I can now see that my teacher's looking at my document and I can actually see the feedback that she's giving me. And so maybe I'm like, oh, you know what? That actually isn't, she's right. I'm gonna delete that and put water here. So now when I'm done as the student, if I get out of here, I click on open to attach, you'll see another way for me to get to my file. I can add more additional files if I want to, um, but I can actually submit the document. So if I submit, and once again, I haven't played with what, what it really looks like when we're, we're submitting multiple documents. So if that's something that you do with your students, um, we can test it out together or try it out just to see what it looks and feels like. So it's submitted. If I go back to my teacher view, and I'm going to refresh my screen, that status is gonna go from assigned to submitted. So I can actually see a list of who's submitted and started. So maybe if I know one of my students isn't showing up on my list, I can check with them as to why they haven't accessed the assignment yet. 
And when I go to speed grader, I can now see the submission. And this is where it should seem pretty familiar with what you're used to. Here's the file. So it's that snippet, that, sn that snapshot PDF of what the student submitted. So if this particular student went in and made any additional changes, I'm not seeing that until they resubmit and I'll get to see all the versions here. I can use the annotation tools right within Canvas if I want to provide feedback here in comments. Um, one thing I like as well, because this was an issue with some of the other LTI tools that we use, if you want to use a rubric and you forgot to add it when you were doing your initial um, creation of the assignment, I can add my rubric. I don't have to go back in and do some workarounds. I can still go back and add my rubric to have it be part of my assignment. So this is the process. You got to see the teacher view, the student view. Um, I'm hoping that you, you're noticing it's pretty similar to what we've currently been doing with the current version of the Google um, integration with some improvements that I think we're going to like moving forward. So when it comes to considerations and recommendations, um, with considerations, just remember, and I, I'm going to say it a lot so we help <laughs> remember this, the current Google Apps LTI that we have been using in Canvas has an end of life that's June 30th, 2024. And when that happens, it's important to know that you and your students, you won't lose any assignments or documents. Um, however, you will find that you need to relink assignments that are using the Google Cloud Assignment external tool option. Or if you had anything embedded, those, um, those things can break. So you would have to re-embed, re-link. Um, and what could happen as well is if you wait until after um, the June 30th, the relinking can be a little bit more tricky because there'll be a roundabout way to get to the assignment. And when that comes, I'll make sure I have um, videos for you to, to know what to do. It won't be impossible. It won't be hard. It's just additional clicks you have to do. And then another consideration, I talked about this briefly, where there is a folder created in your CSD docs called assignments um, that will store your Google. So you'll see I have my assignments and then here's each Canvas course I've been using the Google LTI in. And I can click into that and see those Google, those Google files. The current one does this as well. I just don't know how many of us actually go in and access it that way. Um, but that's just a consideration. And then recommendations. Um, I would recommend strongly using this time to get familiar with this new LTI. Um, start using it moving forward. Start making the transition now. Once again, if there are assignments that you know you'll use again next year, you can relink the Google files now. Um, you don't even have to. I had this question um, earlier. If I have an assignment, let's say this assignment was actually one that was already created using, and I'm going to go to the external tool. If it was already it was, if it was created using the Google Cloud's assignment, it's as simple as I can keep the assignment as it is or maybe make a copy and maybe even put, maybe if you have a sandbox co course you're working on, I'd probably recommend you make a copy, but you find the workflow that works best for you, but you don't have to edit any of the assignment details. That can all stay. The only thing you have to change is from external tool, change it from the Google Cloud. I always scroll past it change it from this to the Google Assignments LTI 1.3. So you can make that transition. I will be transparent. What I have not tried yet is what happens when we're importing from one course to another. Um, but that's something I know we experience anyway. But a few unknowns, but that's why we wanted to make this available now. We want to allow people to start making the transition now, trying some things out now. Um, if you come across any questions or issues, please reach out to me and let me know. Uh, my name is Camille Cole. I don't know if I even introduced myself when I started, but Camille Cole, my email is camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org. Um, but thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you try things out. I'd love to know what you're loving about it. Um, but I also specifically would love to know any issues we're running into so we can be prepared in June when that officially gets, the old version officially gets turned off, that we're prepared to continue moving forward with the new version. So um, don't forget to get relicensure credit for watching this bite-sized PD, and I hope you have a wonderful day.